Believe it or not, today we're turning these shallots into these crazy looking black shallots using a special time machine. The only ingredients you need for this is a bag of shallots or onions if you can't find them. Same, same, only a tiny bit different. Now, if you got a big bag, then inevitably there's gonna be some ugly ducklings in there. Discard them and only use the firm looking unblemished ones. You'll also have a lot of skins, which can either be thrown out or make something useful with it, like charcoal. How do you do this? Just burn it until it burns no more. Hello, black stuff. Blend it into a fine powder and store it airtight. Now you have yourself a natural deodorant and free face paint. Just don't wear a white shirt. Before we get to the shallots, You'll need a rice cooker or somewhere to keep a constant high temperature without using a load of electricity. You don't want to upset anyone. Also, chuck a little bamboo mat or something into the rice cooker to avoid direct heat contact with the shallots. The best way would be to backpack them. But if you don't have a little cheap device like this, simply wrap tightly in parchment, followed by foil. Make sure to stick a label on it to keep track of time. This process can take quite a while. Get your shallots or onions into the heat vessel and flick it to the keep warm setting. Optionally, or if you're using a different heating setup, hook it up to a simple thermostat controller unit like this. Set it to 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit, making sure the probe is touching the product. Link below for one like mine. Close it up, get comfy and hibernate for about two months. Before we check, let's prep a quick five second Hufflepuff dough, which we'll need to make something special. Into a bowl goes flour, salt, stirry McStirry, non-negotiable, Grated frozen butter. Cold is the best friend of almost every pastry. Keep that in mind or write a sticky note. Add the butter, rub it together quickly but firmly until it looks a bit like rough sand. Ice cold water goes in. Mixy mix. When it's barely a dough and still somewhat patchy, cover with plastic or a lid and move it to the fridge for 15 minutes. Flour a work surface. Dump the dough onto it. Quickly pat it into somewhat of a rectangle. At no point should the dough look fully mixed or smooth. Flour the rolling pin your granny used to beat you with. Then gently but firmly pat it flatter and roll it out going from center to sides in one direction until you have a 5mm thick sheet of dough. Trim it up as you please and stick a few holes in it with a fork. Get the holy dough onto a parchment lined tray and shove it into the freezer for 10 minutes. The trimmings can be put back together and used one more time or freeze it for future use. Preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius or 374 degrees Fahrenheit. Make a quick egg wash with equal parts milk and egg. Give the whole thing a nice brushing, spreading love and eggy stuff all over. Then stick it into your or someone else's preheated oven. Bake until golden brown. This could take anything from 12 to 20 minutes, depending on your or your neighbor's oven. Back to the shallots. They should now be deep dark brown in color. You'll have quite a bit and you need to know how to use it. Can't just go around making black stuff and not use it for anything. Before that, let's take a closer look at these. Snip open the ends of the bags using a pair of scissors. Carefully remove a shallot and pay close attention to all the changes that happened during hibernation. It'll be very soft and all the layers separated. The aroma will be rich like dark caramel. And like most blackened veg and fruit, it'll have a distinctive prune flavor. <coughs> remove and discard the root. The tough outer layers will be used for something special. Remove and lay them onto a dehydrated tray or simply a silicone lined baking sheet. Collect the inner parts and chop it up indiscriminately but not too fine. Whack the skins into a dehydrator or oven set to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit until completely dry. Meanwhile, we make a special little Hufflepuff tart. Top with the chopped blackened shallots. Follow up with something salty, like anchovies and olives, or some sort of cheese, like februchon, pecorino romano, or Greek feta. Drizzle a bit of olive oil and run it through the oven, just to get it nice and hot again. Here you have yourself a perfect little snack. A Hufflepuff pizza, if you like. Directly related to the French saladier, but just better. Pardon, Monsieur Dupont? After a day in the desert, the skins will now be ready for action. They should be dry as a nun's broomstick very dry otherwise tears will follow <laughs> blend it in a spice or coffee grinder until you have a fine powder as is this stuff can now be used to flavor soups and purees or sprinkle over vegan dishes like roasted chicken you're welcome another thing i like to do is black shallot salt take some fine sea salt and mix it in with some of the shallot powder it's great on some freshly baked baguettes with butter simple yet super effective Speaking of simple, do you like potatoes? Okay, okay. Simply boil them gently in salted water until done. Whack in some butter, sprinkle in some black shallot salt, chop up some spring onions, in goes that, pepper it up, 
touch of olive oil, and you have yourself a simple potato dish like never seen mm, before. But delicious. what about the simple little chutney? Alright, cool. It only takes a second. Chop up the shallots as indiscriminately as before. Get it into a pan. Add the juice that pulled in the bag from the shallots. In goes balsamic vinegar, brown sugar or whatever sugar you have. Give it a little stir and cook it down on medium heat until you have a chutney looking like this. Kinda like a Branston pickle, just better. Sorry Johnny. And what do we do with that? Yes, we stick it onto some matured cheddar. And you know what they say about shallots? Once you had them black, mmm, the forbidden English fruit. Now you can't just go around turning shallots black and call it a day, which is why you need to go and watch this video on how to grow the world's craziest mold and use it in your cooking. Thanks for watching. Love you long time. Bye bye.